Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today we're going to be seeing between the RX 5500 XT and the GTX 1650 Super which graphics card is the one for you for under $200. So the goal in today's video is for you to hopefully leave with an informed opinion on which card is going to be the best for you for your money since a lot of these have their own different pros and cons. And this review video slash comparison video is going to go beyond the generic 1080p gaming benchmarks comparison between both cards with gameplay on screen because there is more to these cards like especially when it comes to the wattage and thermals especially if you're going to be throwing in one of these graphics cards into a budget gaming PC with a budget PC case that may have only one fan which means you may want a card that produces the least amount of heat and also maybe which card is going to be better for productivity in case you wanted to take advantage of any of the imprinted technologies for maybe streaming or content creation. So hopefully I'll give you guys the most well-rounded opinion on each card to hopefully make you decide on your choice and if you have made your choice already by this point in the video which you shouldn't have because you haven't even watched it yet then I will have a link in the description below to both of these cards. Anyways, if you enjoy budget PC gaming content like this, especially in the graphics card realm, since I will be touching more on that in the future, then do consider subscribing to the Scatterable channel because I will be producing more content now since I'm pretty much here locked at home. And if you want to make this video more visible in the algorithm, especially considering how crowded YouTube has been lately, then give it a like and that'll give it a little boost. And with that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. So if you are planning to build a budget gaming PC, especially with maybe one of these cards right here, and you've built it, it's all ready to go, you load up Windows, you install it, you get to the home screen, and you're like, yes, I did it. But then you have that little watermark in the bottom right of your screen, and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot to buy a Windows 10 key, and I'm all out of money. Well, luckily, you don't need to spend $100 on another Windows 10 key, because you can grab a very inexpensive one from a website called VIPSEDKey.com. VIPSEDKey is an online retailer full of a bunch of different Windows 10 keys ranging from home to pro, and you can activate your brand new or unactivated gaming PC within a matter of minutes. And if that wasn't good enough, you can get them for a discount as well using my code in the description below to get a discount on your next order. So if you wanna check out VIPSEDKey, I will have a link for them in the description below. So real quick, let's get an overview of each card before we get into the initial benchmark, starting with the 5500 XT. This is the 4 GB version and it retails for $180 and is based off of the 7 nanometer Navi architecture and it sports 1,408 cores, 88 texture mapping units, and 32 render output units. And we're comparing it to its brother, the GTX 1650 Super with 4GB of VRAM as well, and it retails right now for about $160 at the lowest, and it's based off of the 12 nanometer Turing architecture. It has 1,280 cores, 80 texture mapping units, and 32 render output units. So to jump right into the 1080p gaming benchmarks, I went ahead and tested these, I believe on the most popular games according to Twitch, so like Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Apex Legends, and a few of those other titles at 1080p, and I went ahead and booted up multiplayer and did my rounds with these cards. Now, if you're wondering about the rig I'm testing these on, I'm testing them on my most recent budget gaming PC that has a Ryzen 1600 AF, 16 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz dual channel memory, as well as a B450M Pro 4 motherboard from ASRock. So the reason why I'm testing out the capabilities of these entry-level cards with a budget gaming PC is because the majority of you probably watching this video don't have the highest end of a gaming PC to see just purely on a testing methodology standpoint which graphics card is purely faster than the other because if you want that you can go to the other graphics card review videos of both of these cards and get that but if you want a more realistic view of how well these cards will perform in an entry level rig like what i have here then hopefully my comparison will do a good job illustrating that rather than showing the extremes and just giving a clear defined answer of which card is faster than the other and with that being said here are the results of the benchmarks
So those were the comparison benchmarks between each of these cards. And I wanna go ahead and give some highlights of those benchmarks, as well as a value analysis, calculating the frames per dollar of each card. So the main goal with these benchmarks was to see if both of these cards could average about 120 frames per second or 144 frames per second on a lot of popular titles that you might run up on your own PC to take advantage of 144 and 120 hertz refresh rates. And luckily, I think both cards did an okay job at that, especially considering that the 1% and 0.1% lows were not abysmal. So you will get a consistent frame rate on a lot of these games. But more importantly, it looks like both of these cards are trading blows in a lot of these games. Some games are running better on the 1650 Super and some are running better on the RX 5500 XT. And really the only game that looks like there's a huge lead in one card over the other end is PUBG on the RX 5500 XT. But the rest of the game spread is fairly even. But the value analysis tells a different story because there is a $20 difference between each of these cards. So here on the frames per dollar analysis, we can see that the GTX 1650 Super does have the better value across the board, especially on a lot of those titles that we tested that are optimized for Nvidia cards like Fortnite. And really the only game that looks like it holds up its value on the AMD card has to be PUBG. But even the ones where like an Apex where the RX 5500 XT has a lead in, it's not that much of a frames per dollar lead over the GTX 1650 Super. So surprisingly for the money, you're gonna get more value out of the GTX 1650 Super as far as this game testing spreadsheet goes. But even then, while the benchmarks and value analysis may speak on their own terms, we can't forget about the thermals and the other additional features offered by both of these cards. Which actually, when it comes to thermals and wattage, both of these cards performed fairly similarly. Actually, the temperatures between both of these cards stayed below 70 degrees Celsius at peak load while gaming, which is good to see because you don't want a super hot graphics card in a budget gaming PC that could totally thermal throttle the other components of your gaming PC, like the RX 580 or RX 590, if you pick up one of those used. But since these two are based off really efficient architectures, they aren't gonna be producing that much heat, which is a good thing to see if you're buying one of those budget PC cases that may only have one or two included fans. But now I know there's gonna be a lot of you in the comment section that are gonna be talking about the NVEC encoder on the GTX 1650 Super and how that alone is gonna make it an even more valuable card because you can use that NVEC encoder for streaming. And I tested streaming on the GTX 1650 Super while gaming at the same time on my budget gaming PC and I have some surprising results. So I went ahead and streamed Black Mesa on the GTX 1650 Super in spirit of the recent Half-Life Alex release. And surprisingly, despite getting about 100 frames per second average in-game on the GTX 1650 Super, whenever it streamed back to my Twitch channel, the footage and frames were just really choppy and messy. It was not good looking. Everything was fairly inconsistent despite the quality being there. And I don't think the NVEC encoder could hold up on the GTX 1650 Super while playing at the same time. And if you're wondering, no, don't even attempt streaming on the AMD card. It does have an HVEC encoder for that, but it's just not good. I wouldn't do it. And for even more comparison, I went ahead and actually streamed using the Ryzen 1600 AF as the CPU with the X264 encoder on the very fast preset just for comparison's sake between that and the 1650 Super. And even the CPU produced better stream results than using the NVEC encoder on the 1650 Super, which I think just morally comes down to the fact that the 1650 Super is just not powerful enough on its own to stream. And on that note too, again, just don't even attempt streaming on the AMD card because I can already tell you it's not gonna be good. So if you were looking at streaming and playing games at the same time with the GTX 1650 Super or RX 5500 XT, I would not look at these cards because they just don't have enough firepower to do both of those tasks at the same time. So for my overall conclusion and my deciding point between each of these cards and in which one you should ultimately choose, I think we should just first mention that both of these cards I think do an excellent job at nailing a high refresh rate gameplay that you want to take advantage of high refresh rate monitors like averaging 120 frames per second and 144 frames per second for under $200, which is some pretty awesome value. Though looking at it more specifically, the GTX 1650 Super does offer more value for being $20 less. And again, both of these cards are very similar when it comes to the thermals, the performance, and even the specifications because they both have the same amount of VRAM. But that 1650 Super just has a little more value. 
And I think, of course, when it comes to the performance, as you just saw, the performance trades. So maybe it's just a matter of which games are more optimized for AMD titles and which games are more optimized for NVIDIA titles, because I think those will ultimately play out for which card is going to be faster for those games. So if it were me, I would ultimately choose whichever card is cheaper on the day you're buying it. And that I think would be the main deciding point. Anyways, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy this content, do consider subscribing to the Scatterable channel because I want to make another one of these guides, but for maybe under $300 or maybe even a VR style one where we can look at which budget graphics card is gonna be the best for VR and all that fun stuff with graphics cards. So if you wanna see more of that content, then hit that subscribe button. And of course I have my other social medias linked down below, that being my Discord, Twitter, and Instagram, where I'm always active on all of those platforms. So I have those in the description as well. And again, thank you so much for watching and this is the Scatterable Channel, signing out.